When you sit in a seat of authority, you affect those things that are around you and you have power over it. You have control over what you sit over. And what happens in this particular scripture that we're reading in Colossians is it talks about the throne. The throne is a place where there is a seat of authority. And in that seat of authority, everything under it has, um, it impacts everything that's under it. So what happens now is if you are wise, you will find the highest seat of authority and you will put yourself under it because that will be the seat that will have power over your life. I don't want to belabor it, but I, but, I, but I feel I have to say this, is, is the greatness of the throne indicates the power of the person that sits on it. The greater the throne, the greater the power. The greater the throne, the greater the power. So in the book of 2 Chronicles, and the book of 2 Kings, it talks about Solomon's throne. Solomon, he's, he recognized that I'm going to be king and I built God this wonderful temple, but I have to build my own place. And one of the great crowning achievements of Solomon's temple is that he built himself a throne. Now the throne that Solomon built, he didn't put it in the temple, but he put it outside of the temple because he recognized that the throne and the altar are two different things. So what he did is he put his throne outside of the temple and he made his throne out of ivory most kings great kings they make their throne out of wood but he found the most expensive thing one of the most quality substances to make his throne if his throne was only ivory he would have a greater throne than every other king around but he said I want my people because we have so much gold. We have so much gold, we don't even know what to do with it. He says, I want you to find not just gold, but I want you to find the best gold. Gather all the gold you can see. It doesn't matter if it belongs to a person. It doesn't matter if it's for that activity, for that activity. Once the temple is built, whatever is the best after the temple, give it to me. And they gave it to him, and he melted it, and he overlaid his throne with that gold. He didn't want to have gold. He wanted to have the best gold. So it's made out of ivory with the best gold, but then he got the best people to design it. And they put on one hand a huge lion on one arm, a huge lion on the other arm. And then he said, build me a platform. See, God didn't want, you know, great platforms and somebody, but Solomon said, I want a great platform. Build me a platform with six steps. And I want you to put on each step two lines on each side. So when somebody walks up to me, they feel intimidated because I got power. So when a person walks up to Solomon and they see the greatness of his throne and they're getting intimidated, two thoughts come to their mind. Do, do, I, do, I, do I submit to him or do I overthrow him? If I'm more powerful than him, I'm going to overthrow him because, man, this throne looks nice. You see, if he was sitting on a picnic table, then someone would walk by and say, I don't even want that throne. And they would just walk away. And they might steal things here and there, but... But they wouldn't honor the throne. But when they saw how great the throne was, they said to themselves, if I could get this, I get the whole entire, I don't have to even steal anything over there. Over here. All I got to do is just take the throne. Uh, and if I take the throne, then I'm the king. Because when you build a great throne, it protects the kingdom because people understand that if they can get the throne, then they can remove you and they can get everything. But if you're strong enough, nobody wants to take your throne. So when you're sitting on a gold throne, People will challenge you for the great seat that you sit on because they want to take it from you. But if you're strong enough, they think twice before taking it from you. But if you're not strong enough, the very seat itself will make you a target for evil. Could that be why sometimes we as Christians struggle? Because God has given us a seat of authority. And it's beautiful and we don't even recognize it. And the person outside, they can see it. And they're trying to figure out, if I can't get it, how can I take it from them? So they offer you a drink. How can I take it from them? You don't see cannabis is legal. Just get, don't, who cares what the church says? How can I take it from them? 
oh, you know, this little deal, come on, it's just a little bit of, un, you know, untruth, but it's okay because you're going to make some money. How can I take it from them? Because anytime you understand the power of your throne and the worth of your throne, you don't want to exchange it for anything, but you have to, you got to ramp up your army. Because the one thing that's interesting about Solomon, and I hope I'm not belaboring the point, is that Solomon built his army first before he built his throne. Because he recognized that when I got the throne, I had to have something to protect it because someone's going to try to come for me. I'm saying all this because, because, because there, is, there is a creation story about authority. There is an authority creation story. And the authority creation story is right here in um, Colossians. And the story is, is, is this. It says, it, says that, um, it says that for by him were all things created. So this is creation that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible. And then it talks about whether they be thrones. So the throne is the first level of authority. Now, this word throne here is talking about a seat of power or a seat of authority, or a better word is a position. So a throne is a position. Remember I said something about the greatness of the throne indicates the greatness of the person. So God says that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So if you want to get everything that God ever created, all you got to do is grab God and take him off the throne and put yourself there. But the reason why nobody does that is because everybody understands that if you touch God, God may touch you back. The, the power of God makes people not want to mess with God. Now there's a difference between criticism. Because in any kingdom, you always have critics. But critics always say what they're going to do, but never do anything. Because they recognize that they do something that the king may act. If I was the bishop, I would have never done that. If I was worship, if I was doing worship leading, I would have did that better. If I was the boss of this company, this place would run so much better. But many times... Even sometimes if I say it, I wouldn't say it to the person because if I said it to my boss, the boss would say, oh, you can run the company better? Go to another one. I don't want to hear that. But there's a difference between a critic and a person who wants to conquer you. And what happens now is that God is in a place where God fully understands that nobody can conquer him. So he sits on his throne. And, and, and he is the ultimate person that sits on a throne. But when it comes to creation and God said, let there be. And everything was created in the midst of him creating everything that could be seen. He was creating authorities and powers. He was putting things into order. The reason why he said to Adam and Eve, you will have dominion. Because he recognized he was putting authority into them and the seed that was within them. Because he had an intention to bring order to the world and to bring order through people. And the first stage of bringing order in the invisible, visible world is to bring this thing called a throne. And the world is so backward that the world doesn't even recognize that there are levels of authority. Everybody's trying to grab a throne. Everybody's trying to be the big boss. Everybody's trying to be in a position of leadership. Some people will steal your idea and try to lead you in your very idea. Because people are trying to get thrones because they don't understand authority. Because if they understood authority, they'd recognize that if I'm going to get a throne, I better get some security before I get that throne. Because somebody's going to come in and somebody's going to deal with me. Have you ever seen somebody sitting on a throne and you recognize they shouldn't be there? And something in your spirit says that, man, I could remove her. Man, I could remove him. As a matter of fact, anybody could remove them. But you leave them alone because you say, God didn't tell me to touch them. And the only thing that keeps them in a position of authority is that God's mercy has told people to leave them alone. But if the devil ever got unleashed on some folk, people that are talking like they have power, people that are talking like they're better than other people, people that are criticizing people because look at your children. They don't go to church. The reason why your children go to church is because of the mercy of God. 
had it not been for the mercy of God, they would not have made it. They made it despite you. But sometimes when you see the problem that are going on, you say, God, take me to another level of authority. I don't just want to have a seat of power. I want to know what I'm doing with my life. 